Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio with Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 where I've made some big steps forward in the Anacreon production or at least in the making plans to get to that. But first, let's go back to the very beginning, a very good place to start, where the Naquitite comes from, which is out here on Stardust. And so I've made some uh, minor improvements over here, the most obvious one of which is I've put in a second train that's bringing the, uh, the ores over here to be, uh, to be dealt with. Um, and so you can see the ship comes and goes from here. We've got the, the system is, it has been up and running, a ship has come along, filled up mostly, something went a little bit funny there, which we need to look into, and has now cleared off again. And everything is now working. So the, um, all, all the processing down here for the iridium powder that I was talking about in the last episode has now started working properly. We've got all the, we've got the various inputs coming in and those are all being processed through. I've dealt with the uh, train batteries down here so there's now a, a dump way for the for the batteries to be taken away around here. And as you can see the um the batteries are getting reused by being taken out of, by being taken out of the machine out of the uh, battery chargers here and then they're getting put onto the right side of the belt so they go up here which means this inserter will prioritize them for going back into the train but as they start to gradually eventually die the new ones can be taken from this belt and the old ones can be disposed of down here where they'll then just drop onto the uh, onto the disposal belt and the disposal belt is the same one as, as takes all of the um, the crushed naquitite through and puts it into the spaceship. So it, I'm quite happy just dumping all of that through in exactly the same way. It does mean that further on down the line I need to think about exactly what's being brought through where and where it's being unloaded, but that's fine, that's a problem for later on and not a particularly difficult one to solve. The current issue and the reason this has, uh, has ground to a halt is because the system isn't flowing all the way through yet. So we've had one spaceship depart, but it hasn't come back again yet because there hasn't been anywhere for it to unload at the other end and therefore it hasn't been able to complete its loop. However, uh, when it does come back it will bring a load more sulphur with it which can be dumped onto the belt here, brought around here, turned into sulphuric acid and then the sulphuric acid can flow up here to go into this tank in order to fill the trains up. And we seem to be getting through surprisingly little sulphuric acid. So if we look in this train over here for example we can see that it's used up 5,000 acid from it in order, to, and, and it's managed to pick up uh, 4,000 Naquitite. And that feels a little bit weird, because when I looked at the numbers in FNEI, we, we can take a look at Naquitite, and we can see that making one Naquitite requires, apparently requires 20 sulfuric acid. Now, we do have a roughly 100% mining productivity bonus here, so just over 100%, which would, which would then, ex which would then mean I would expect every time it does a, it does a mining event it for it to for it to pull out two pieces of naquitite essentially and so that would mean effectively instead of taking 20 acid per dig or per per piece of naquitite that's produced it would only take 10 but even so it still only seems to have used 5000 acid in order to make 4000 naquitite and in fact looking at the numbers here it's 4000 to make 4000 so it seems to be more of a one to one and that's a bit surprising and i don't really understand why because um, and it also means that if we look out at one of these mines down here for example we can see that this one has managed to completely fill up its warehouse but it's still got 93,000 in it, and uh, these these pumps are set to cut off at uh, when this gets up to 100,000. So we've only used 7,000 to completely refill this um, this warehouse. So there's something a bit funny going on with the acid over here. Now I'm not actually complaining because this is this is really good. If we're using a lot less acid, that means that the sulfur that we're bringing out here is going to be under a much lighter load. So it's going to be much much easier to keep everything running. And it also means that if I wanted to, I could manually set these trains to depart a couple a few extra times, and they'll go off, they'll run off, and they'll go and pick up some more naquitite as well so we can get the system running again and we can get a bit of a, a, um, a supply of the crush stuff set up here and waiting now we're going to have the same problem here where that'll they'll try and fill up the uh, the, tra the train with acid here but it just won't happen but we'll empty empty these wagons out very very quickly as you can see because it's so um, so voluminous the uh, it, it em means the trains empty incredibly quickly when you hook them up like this uh, and then this one could be sent off as well and we can send both the trains off as well, because one of the things I did in the last stream was set up another Naquitite mine. So we've got this one down here, where the uh, the train is happily happily filled up from, and to be honest, it's probably going to be almost full again down here. Yes, this warehouse is very nearly full again already. This will have filled up completely to 100,000, and we'll, we'll top up with whatever the train took away. That, that's all fine. Meanwhile, over here, we have a second mine that's been set up. And this is the one I built the rails out to it before, and I've just finished it off by putting in the, the actual mine itself and the rails going around here and the station and so on. So that's uh, finished this little bit off. I couldn't quite fit the curve in there where I wanted to, but, you know, that, that's good enough. Uh, and so, again, over here, we've got the set, we've got a load of drills set up. I put a speed module in, uh, speed beacon in on this one because I thought I might as well. And we've got the same sort of thing where the acid is being pumped out until there's 100,000 in the tank, and then the train can clear off again, and we'll, uh, we'll top up and... This, this warehouse is, is already half full. So it's, yeah, we, we have enormous quantities of uh, Naquitite sort of theoretically available. And if I manually nudge the trains, then we can get a lot more flowing through. As you can see over here, we've now got, um, well, we've had a healthy supply flow through here. And now over at this end, most of it has gone through. We've now got 
um, about a thousand na crushed nacrotides. So the the problem we're see the problem we're running into here is that this the, these trains come over and yes they're, they're re these are really long trains. I think these are the longest ones we've had in this in this game so far but by a significant margin. Um, and yet they only store four thousand. And then when you process it. 4,000 nacrotide. Well, it takes it's eight, eight to two, so it divides it by it divides it by four. So we getting we should be getting about a thousand out for each train load. Um, we then get, we then get slightly bigger stacks coming out as well, which is nice. So in, instead of only stacking up to ten like it does in the trains, it stacks up to twenty. So that means that this entire entire one entire train of the with the, these with eight carriages in it will produce one wagon's worth of uh, crushed nacrotide which is kind of ridiculous and is why it would be very very nice to be able to put some productivity modules in here however if i did want a productivity module the um the, the nacrotide pro crushing then i would have to get it onto a planet first because you can't use productivity modules in space with a few exceptions uh, and that would mean that we need eight times as many ships in order to transport it as we do if we're just using the um, if, if we're transporting the crushed nacrotite and that's why I thought I think we'll take one hit on this we'll turn it into the crushed nacrotite and accept that yeah okay it means we don't get the productivity bonus on this stage but we only have to transport we only need an eighth of the number of ships to, uh, tr to transport it all and I think that is a worthwhile uh, a worthwhile sacrifice <laughs> I've also put in uh, meteor defense cannons over here because, uh, well, I wasn't sure when I first came out here whether we actually got uh, meteorites in space as well, in, in deep space specifically, because we are way out in the middle of nowhere out here in Stardust. We, this, is, this is not, it, but it is, I suppose it is an asteroid field, so yeah, there's going to be small rocks floating around. That's, that's fair enough. Uh, so I put, put the guns in. Those, will, as, as usual, will be supplied by a spaceship. And so this should keep us all safe out here. At least that's the plan. The other big important major thing that has changed out here is that as we saw in the last video, the spaceship that turned up here, it departed immediately and um, when it shouldn't have done. And so there's, it, we're having the um, the unloading, no, the immediate departure problem we've, been, we've seen a few times with other ships. And so I put in a system over here, which I copied directly from Tristan's modifications to the Agnea spaceship, which is this combinator over here, which is watching for a speed signal. And that's being exported from the spaceship. There's nothing over here that's going to set it. So when the spaceship lands, it outputs a speed signal along with its, all the stuff inside it, everything, out onto the network here, and then we can read that and if we if we see a, if we see a, a speed at all, then it will output a green tick, which then gets passed over to here. We're then counting up to four green ticks, and when we see all of those, we launch. So that's I think one to say we've completely emptied all the stuff that's supposed to be emptied. One to say we've loaded all the stuff that's supposed to be loaded. One to say that the ship is has, has arrived and has been here for at least a tick, and a fourth one for reasons that I can't remember. And uh, yeah, so um, the 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 point the point of this is that when the ship first arrives. It's quite possible that they a lot of the a lot of the in inserters over here will think that the uh, will think they're in a state where a ship is ready to go because these ones won't have noticed that there's stuff to take out. These ones won't have realised that there's that there's space to put stuff in, and so they'll still be outputting the signals for a whole tick where uh, to say that they can uh, that it's okay for the ship to leave. And so, if the ship happens to check whether it's safe to leave on its first on the very first tick when it arrives, then it will leave immediately. And so, this puts in a prevention for that. So, because when the ship has only just arrived, the signal won't have propagated from the ship to here, and the tick gone back over it again as well to tell it that it's okay to leave. And so, that should hopefully get us round the race condition where the ship will leave Im immediately as soon as it lands. And this is one of those annoying things that only happens occasionally because the ship checks every every second or possibly every five seconds to see whether it's getting a launch signal to tell it to leave and so there's a, a 1 in 60 or possibly a 1 in 300 chance of this hap of, of it having the problem and the rest of the time it's going to be absolutely fine so having this in here is probably going to help and I think we'll, we should make it safe and, and mean that the ship won't leave in the first couple of ticks after it arrives. Once all this was set up, I flew back over to Norbit with the intention of, of grabbing all the stuff I needed in order to do the rest of the Naquian processing and then heading over to Talos to get it all set up. This step of the process took a little bit longer than I was expecting. There's, there's uh, quite a lot to it, shall we say. Uh, the first part was really easy. I, th I thought, right, okay, so we're going to need some spaceships, we're going to put them over in Talos orbit and we're going to have to have somewhere for them to land. So we'll have one land up here and um, we'll, have the, we'll have the spaceship come over from, um, from Stardust, we'll land it here, we'll unload all of the... Um, all the crushed nacrotite. It can be then taken down in a train down the space elevator. So I put in a piece of track as well. All this stuff all came together quite nicely. Um, and then I thought, hang on a minute. So that we're going to need. There's, there's, there's sort of several different things happening here. One is there's all the beryllium stuff that's been happening for the past however long and is just ticking over nicely. We'll ship the beryllium out. It's fine. We know what we're doing there. This, this, this works. Then we've got the long range ship that's going to be take, bringing the uh, the crushed. Naquitite from Stardust over to Talos to be processed. So that's fine. We'll land that. We'll land that one in here. 
Then there's going to be the Naquium as well, and also all of the things that are needed in order to turn the Naquitite into Naquium. I could possibly have tried to cobble that together in one of, you know, on one of these ships, maybe have this one fly out um, whenever it fills up with junk, beryllium and Naquium, and just all of, the, all of that going into the same ship, and have it bring out all of the different things that are required to make the Naquium. There's lots of those, see what I mean? But I didn't really want to have, have the, uh, the Naquium sort of tied up in the, with the beryllium. Partly because if we look over in, in back in um, Norbit again, you can see here the Talos ship is kind of stuck. And this is because initially it was only bringing over beryllium and byproducts. And so it didn't matter if it got stuck here when there's loads and loads of beryllium. But if we wanted to have it doing other things as well, then well, we'd need to put in, maybe put in more warehouses to clear up this cloggage. Maybe find some way to use lots of beryllium. I don't know, it, we, we'd ha we have too much beryllium at the moment and it'd be a bit of a pain to clear that out. Also, and a bit more seriously, how would we do? How would we sort the Naquium out of here? So we, we could perhaps have more. Uh, we'd have two of these belts carrying beryllium, two of them carrying Naquium, and have them split off. But then where would they go to? We can't have. A, there isn't really. Um, there's kind of room for another station in here for the Naquium, but it's going to be a bit of a squeeze to get it in. And yeah, it's all just a bit a bit difficult. So we decided there's enough downsides to trying to use the same ship that actually it'd be a lot easier just to have an additional one that stops off over here and we'll fly in, we'll drop, we'll, we'll park here and we'll unload the Naquium directly in up here and we'll also then load itself up with the bajillion different things. It doesn't need elevator, oh, I suppose it could bring elevator cable, there's no harm in that. Um, but then brings out the bajillion different things that are required for the Naquium. So there's going to be a lot of extra stuff going to be being brought in here. Uh, we may need more belts over here, we may need more, we may need to fiddle with the infrastructure a bit, but in theory there's no reason why we can't just have all of this stuff, all the stuff that's needed for the Naquium being dumped onto a ship from here. One concern I do have is that I worry that we're going to be shipping more stuff out to Talos than we're shipping in, in, in stacks than we are shipping Naquium back again. So I think we might need to set up some sort of launch condition that launches the uh, the Naquium ship to come back over here to, uh, to Norbit to restock whenever one of the uh, one of the products that we need at the other end runs out, rather than when we uh, when we actually manage to fill it up, because I suspect we're not actually ever going to fill it up with uh, Naquium all the way to the top. But that was all fairly easy, so I dropped down the. Uh, we have a blueprint for this, which has got all, all the notes on it to tell us how to set it up. It's got all of the uh, all the bits and pieces in here that are needed. So we I put down a couple of blueprints and then copied the blueprints into some of these chests as well. So we, we've got the um, we've got the logistics request manager mod, which allows you to take a blueprint, drop it onto here, and boop, it just immediately puts all of the stuff. Not that one. Uh, immediately puts all the stuff you need for that blueprint into the uh, in, into the uh, requests for a uh, for, for for a chest. So, for example, here is the blueprint for the uh, for the outpost spaceship ship, ship space station. So, if I drop that in here on here, it bloop, all all that appears on there. Uh, this appears to have been the wrong uh, chest, but never mind. Uh, so, we've, we, because I'm not going to save this, so we've now got requests for all the bits and pieces that are required for that um, for, for that blueprint. So they'll be brought over by the bots. They'll be put in here like this, and there we go. That's that's enough to make one of these uh, one of these outposts. In fact, no, I think I put two of them in here. So we've got enough to make two of those outposts. The next step was deciding what to do with all that stuff once we had it. So um, this meant I then dipped into the blueprint uh, designer. And putting this together took me basically the entire second half of the stream. There was, um, yes, quite a lot of this too. Quite a lot to, to go together here. Um, so let's let's start at the end this time and work backwards because I think this is probably the nicest way to look at the Naquium recipe. And I'll I'll keep the uh, the card on screen as well so you can you can f follow through in your at your own speed. So over here, the, the the final step is is cooking the Naquium into uh, is cooking the Naquium ingots themselves, and that requires you to have the re refined the, the Naquium powder and the Naquitite crystals. So there's, there's three different purple inputs that go in at the top here. You also need to add in a certain amount of uh, pyroflux, and you also need methane gas. So the methane gas is just being melted out of methane ice. That's relatively easy. Um, this is being produced on big grid in relatively small quantities, and out on Stardust as well in. Let's just say in whatever quantity we want it to be produced in. It's easily, we can produce as much of it as we want. We just need to know, work out how much to ship. And I'm gonna think through the numbers a bit uh, once, we, once we've got things up and running a bit. I might just ship over whatever is available from Big Red and then top it up from uh, Stardust. But, or we might find out that actually we don't need any from Stardust and the amount being produced on Big Red is plenty. But as you can see, this, is, this machine is not running flat out but it is occasionally doing a little burst just to keep itself uh, keep itself full, and that's being pumped out here. We've got, and I've put in quite a lot of machines down here to process all of the uh, all the Naquim because it's a relatively slow process. At least partly because I've come through and I've put in tier eight productivity modules in all of these uh, machines. Now we don't actually have tier eight productivity modules, but we decided that a good way to a good way to set this up and to get it sort of 
design, well designed and nicely balanced and so on, would be to design it around tier eight modules, and at that point, when we, and, and then build it with tier sevens, and then at the, in the future when we have tier eights and we can upgrade it, it'll be all be nicely balanced and it'll it'll just it'll just work very very well. Now what's quite interesting here is these crystals are starting to back up, which is a bit of a surprise, and it's, it's making me think that maybe I should put in another two rows of the of the chemical of the furnaces down at the bottom, because it'd be quite easy to take basically this this much roughly not the not the mod not the beacon and just put this in down here and i think the beacon should still cover all of it because if you look up above you can see that the uh, the beacon is covering two rows of the machines so if i put these here like this boop, then we should find this beacon yes it does just cover co covers another two rows now i don't need any of this i shouldn't have copied that and so this will just basically just work. I'm going to need to put yeah, I'll, I'll need to put in a, a couple of extra splitters and, and and underground in here to get the uh, to get the ingredients through. That's that's fine. Um, same go in here, and then a belt like that. So yeah, it'd be fa it'd be quite easy to bring all that through. And now I suspect at this point we'll get to the, we, we will now start to not have enough crystals, and then they 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 won't back up. This is probably going to be too much, but I'm not sure. And I feel that it's it's nice to have that expansion available to me. So the crystals, yes, the crystals being t uh, being made. They, these also take in both the uh, refined and the naquin powder. So both of those need to be pulled in in, in quite large quantities. You can see it's a, it's very large quantities. I've got a purple belt here, and we're still barely getting through enough of the refined. That's interesting. I'm going to have to have a look into that because I thought these I thought we were okay on for both of those just flowing through at, what, at the rate they needed to. Uh, this also takes in quite a lot of the vitalic reagents, as you can see down here. Um, but some of that gets passed back out again, and, we, and I've got in fact lots of everything gets passed around again. There's lots of of returns in this recipe. In fact, about about half of it, looking at no, slightly less than half of the inputs, gets returned. Um, and there's a 40% a, a chance almost of the vitalic reagent coming back out again. And so I've got these splitters in here that are just passing it back round. I've got the we're pulling out the refined and the powder here. Those are getting merged onto this belt and then coming up here and then being sorted in as appropriately at the top. And we've got a priority uh, splitter here, so we're using we're recycling it first and then feeding it in from there as, as a second as a secondary input. Um, and this does seem to be, I mean, it seems to be mostly keeping up. The machines are all green, so, oh, no, well, except for those two. Okay, the machines are mostly green, so it's, it's kind of hanging on just about. <laughs> um, and then similarly over here, we've got the, um, the Vitalic reagent being passed around and put back in over here as well, uh, so it carries on. It gets, it gets recycled, goes round and round and round as necessary. So, yeah, that's, that's quite a, a nice, neat little area of, for, do, for doing the, uh, the centrifuging of the Naquim. Now up here, this bit's this bit's interesting because, as you see from the diagram, there are two ways to make both the uh, the naquitite powder and the crushed naquitite. And, and sorry, and the refined naquitite. Uh, however, they have slightly different balance levels. So if we look at this one down here, this one, this one, you can tell is, is, is it, this one is the powder focused one. You can tell because there's a powder on the machine there, a powder icon, and this produces. So this one produces more powder than it does naquitite than it does refined naquitite. The other recipe has the refined on the on the icon, and it produces more of the refined than it does of the, of the naquin powder. So the theory I've come up with here here is that well we're going to need quite a lot of both of them, sure. But if we um, if we balance the system so that we we tell the machines to run when there's less than a thousand of the thing they produce primarily in the chests over here, then we can have them turn on and off as appropriate in order to keep the amounts balanced. So you can see here this this chest here has a thousand powder in it at the moment. So this is turned off um, because it's it's linked across here with the red cable to this piece of belt down here. Now we've just dipped below a thousand again, so we've now started to let it back through. Um, but once that gets to above a thousand again, so once we turn this through, we'll get this abo slightly above a thousand and it'll cut it'll cut the supply off over here so we'll stop producing the powder and so using this we can switch back and forth between which machines are turned on now it does seem to, it seems to me that these machines up here are always running and and, we, and even despite that we still have a shortage of the uh, of if the refined naquitite down here so we might need to change some of the change some of the setup around here a little bit because we're just using this up a bit a little bit too fast at the moment um, but the basic theory works so we've got one of them that is is full you see it's got okay it's got up to 1200 now um, but that's okay because it's now stopped yes we're getting a little bit of it through from here but we use it but it's coming out out faster now than it's going in. So this is this is working quite nicely to keep the keep the two balanced. And up here, these first two machines, and I've only and it's it's only two machines because well, one half belt of one half blue belt of the uh, crushed naquitite is about right to keep two machines running, as you can see by the fact that this one is occasionally cutting in and out. 
I do have more machines in across here, and I'm considering maybe adding in, a, maybe having a, another, an, a faster belt here and putting turning in on a third or even a fourth machine. I think there's just about room on the output belt down here. If we look at the numbers on, on here, we can see that we've got 10 going in each time, and we've got six refined and four powder on um, on average coming out, so that's 10 coming out. But then there's also a 50% chance of the uh, Catal and Exchange beads. There's a 20% chance of the Beryllium powders, so that's another one roughly. And then also we've got a productivity boost of 72% here, so that's, that's probably about 18 coming out for every 10 that go in. And that's why we've got a green belt down at the bottom, which is looking fairly full. So this, this has a, a capacity of, I guess, is it three times the half belt up here? Um, and we've got about twice coming out. So yeah, there, there's, there's, room to, there's definitely room to run another machine over here. So perhaps the way to fix this would be to upgrade this belt across here. Uh, link it into there. And then let these machines run, these two machines run as well. And that should give me a, a, sl a slight boost. What's the speed difference between these belts? So the speed difference is that this one runs at 45 per second, this one runs at 60 per second. So it's giving an extra third. So this machine won't run flat out, but this machine will run a little bit faster, and this machine will run occasionally. We shouldn't overload this belt. Um, no, this, there's still gaps in it, so that's, that's still fine. But we'll have a bit more of the, uh, the refined coming through now. Maybe that'll make all the difference, maybe it won't. Who knows, we'll have to wait and see. However, the, the problem with this is that when these machines down here are running, they are taking half of the input from this belt, and that means that uh, the, the half blue belt that's coming through here isn't enough to fill up an entire half green belt. But it does mean that whenever this one cuts off, then this will get a, a quite a bit more flowing through. Now, the, the correct thing to do will be to upgrade all of this to green along here, um, <clears throat> this brings us on to the next problem with this, which is, to be honest, I'm not convinced we are producing the uh, crushed Naquitite at the rate of a solid blue belt. If we go back over to Stardust and set this running, I've sent the other train away, so now, now this is the start running. We can see we've got, um, we've got four belts coming in here, and actually we decided this was a four to one, didn't we? So actually, four belts going in means that we will get one solid belt coming out. So technically, if we ignore all of the logistics in this, we are producing the crushed Naquitite at the same rate that we are trying to use it with that blueprint I was showing you earlier. So when all of this is running absolutely flat out, if we have the trains coming through um, reliably and quickly, and maybe we need to put in a third train as well, who knows? Uh, oh, there's no, it's okay, it's going. Um, and put in, put in a third train, put in a fourth train, however many we need to keep the, the flow steady down here. And we have enough spaceships to keep carrying it over uh, and, keep, and just keep, keep the flow going constantly then I think we would actually be able to just about have enough output here to keep the input at the other end satisfied. Uh, that's, I'm not convinced we're going to get to that point because, well, there's um, the, the, the logistics and the, and the sheer quantity of everything that's going to be required to do that is a bit mind-blowing. But it's nice to know that in theory I'm building everything to the same scale. <laughs> I have simplified the process a little bit over here. So uh, uh, we, we've, yes, we've got we've got the two types of naqu uh, crushed naquitite processing, producing the two of the next stage. We then produce the third one here, and the ingredients were here. I touched briefly on needing methane gas. We needed to make the uh, the, the ion exchange beads. So we've got cation down here and anion up here. And comically, each each process produces the other type of bead. So we put the red ones in here, and we get the blue ones out. And that means that we then have to have this sorter here that takes the blue ones out, passes them up here, and then puts them in over here so that they'll get used as a priority for the process up here, vice versa. We have the blue ones going in and the red ones coming out, so they get split off down here. They go down and put in again as a priority to be to go into the into the process down here. So this all works nicely. We are we are swapping the swapping the beads from side to side. It feels very, very silly, but it does work, so you know I'm not going to complain about that. Making the beads is a somewhat slightly convoluted process. The red ones aren't too bad. You need to put some steam in, but steam is just water. Water's easy. Uh, it also needs plastic and, and vulcanite, so we're going to be bringing those in by spaceship. The blue beads take in nitric acid and more steam, but again, steam's just water, that's fine, which require, means we need to bring in rare metals and um, we need to pull, some, pull air out of the air, out of the air. We need to pull nitrogen out of the air and we need to split water down to get the hydrogen out of it. So it's, there's quite a lot of extra machines needed for all of this. I've gone a bit nuts with the, uh, with the speed modules through here. I mean, I think, I, or the beacons through here. I don't think I need this one up here because um, there's not very much running off it and I don't think these are running at anything like, like full speed. So I could probably take Take that beacon out to get rid of it completely. We don't need that. This one down here we absolutely do need, but we're wasting quite a lot of the space inside it. So it's quite likely that I could make things a little bit more efficient by maybe moving, certainly by moving these two machines up into here, and probably that one as well. 
Um, and then this this one down here is this one is is nicely covering the centrifuges and the furnaces. That one is actually quite well used. That's got that's got very near 100% coverage. And if I did move these three machines up here somewhere into this one's coverage, then I could have some more centrifuges down here for make, perhaps making this go a little bit faster. So that's, that's quite tempting. A little bit of a tidying up of the design here. And then this one down here, well, it was only 50% utilized because we only had these these uh, furnaces running off it. Uh, now we seem to, yeah, we've got to the point where we're just not producing the, oh, I haven't linked in the vault, the, um, uh, the red stuff over here or the, or this one. Uh, that this this isn't finished. I, I would need to put in a bit more a pipe, pipe work around here to get that to work. So actually now thinking about this, Getting rid of that beacon, moving these three up into the cat coverage of. Uh, oh, it's just, yeah, moving this one actually. It's only this machine that needs to be moved up into the coverage of this beacon is is sort of tempting, um, but only only very slightly. The next thing to have a quick uh, <laughs> grumble perhaps about is the is the number sheer number of different inputs that are required here. So okay, sure, we've got the we've got the crush and aquatite coming in here. Obviously, we're going to need lots and lots of that. That's the uh, that's the thing we're trying to process. So that's absolutely fine. But then we do we literally need all of the um, exotic materials, including cryonite there, vulcanite there. Then all four of the of the the next stage up of the exotics in some form or another. Now, to actually, technically, the iridium is required in the previous stage, making the crush naquium. So that's not actually being brought here, but it is used in the process. Then we've got vitamelange here in making the vitalic acid, uh, and also the vitalic reagent that's pulled in uh, down here somewhere. That's coming in from the other side, which is a little bit weird, but um, uh, if. That'll probably get spaghetti through somehow when I put the prop, uh, system down properly. We've got holmium coming in in the form of cables like this, uh, which is, so that's going to be need, need, they're going to need to be brought over in huge quantities. And even worse, that produces occasionally a, a, a some powdered holmium. So I'm going to need to reprocess that as well, which I haven't done yet. That's just being sent into a dump chest at the moment. So going to need a going to need a, a holmium processing. But that's not going to be too bad because that just requires st sand and um, and vulcanite. No, sand and pyroflux. And we already have, well, we have pyroflux being made down here. Oh, no, we're just bringing in pyroflux at the moment. Um, but we're generating that on Talos already, so that's not going to be too bad. Um, and also sand as well. So, yeah, we're going to need to reprocess that. And we're going to need plastic in order to turn it back into the holmium cables. But that's okay. We, we need plastic anyway for the, uh, for the red beads over here, so we'll have a supply of that available. Uh, then there's beryllium is required in the form of beryllium hydroxide somewhere in the process. I've, I, I, I have lost it completely. Um, it's going to be one of... Is it you? Yes, it's you up here. So we've got beryllium hydroxide being brought in here, so that's the beryllium requirement, and that then spits out the powder. But that's okay because the reason we're doing this on Talos is because we have a supply of beryllium hydroxide there, and we have a place where we can deal with the powder. So that one's going to be relatively easy. I wonder if we quite require all the mundane resources as well. So we've got the rare metals being brought in here, and water, of course. Uh, plus, uh, iron, iron's required down here for the for the acid. Um, I don't see copper anywhere in this system, which is so that that might be the only thing that isn't needed. Uh, coal is of course and oil are required for the plastics, but they're not required locally, so I don't know if we count them or not. But yeah, Naquium, basically it requires absolutely everything in order to produce it, which is absolutely crazy. And this is why it's taken me. This is why it took me half a stream to just build all of this up and uh, um, <laughs> and get and get it ready. However, now as I've done that. I've now been able to drop that blueprint into this chest, and so we now have all of the stuff that's needed for that blueprint in here. Uh, with the granted, with the tier seven productivity modules instead of the tier eight, but you know we we do what we can, um, and so I can now once once this is once we've finished making the the other um, sixty two productivity productivity sevens that we need, we can then fly off to Talos and start putting it down over there. So that'll be over here. So no, over here somewhere. We'll be working hard at trying to make the uh, productivity productivity sevens, um, which is uh, that's six sevens trying to be made here. But we've run out of one of the um, one one of the bio things. We've run out of vitalic epoxy. Okay, so we've. We'll hopefully get some more of that through from Big Red. We can make the rest of these modules and then we can fly over there and drop the uh, blueprint down and that's going to be crazy. Let's get a feel for the scale because I haven't done this yet. So over here on Talos, we're going to have more... We're going to, this is the elevator. We're going to have trains coming out of here with the, with the other things as well. We can get rid of all these walls now because we've uh, plague rocketed the planet. So we just need to have the, the trains will come out here. They'll cross over these railway lines. They'll probably... And probably we'll probably put it in somewhere over here. So I better bring over a load of cliff explosives as well. And so I can put in my Na Naquium uh, wasp naming blueprint probably upside down like that because of where all the inputs are. Um, if we drop that there, yeah, I mean that's that's fairly big. But actually, to be honest, 
compared to the size of the, the all the beryllium processing I've got, it's, it's no bigger. Now, the beryllium processing is is churning out the ingots at a much, much faster rate, sure. Or at least it is when it's running. It's, it's stopped at the moment because the spaceship's gone away and, there, and hasn't needed to come back yet, and therefore we haven't brought out any more... Uh, What's it short of sulfur? Of course, of course, it's, all, it's always sulfur, uh, and so we, we, this system is not currently running. But if it, but uh, if it was, it'd be, it'd be churning out the uh, the beryllium a little bit faster than we're churning out the um, uh, the naquium over here. Uh, but then, yeah, from there we can then feed all of that back into the back in, into a train, take it up 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 top, and uh, and pass it back over to Norvis, where we can, or at least to Norbit, where we can then start thinking about what we want to do with it and how and how we're going to do all of that, which is going to be um, interesting. And uh, yeah. Uh, I think we, I might have cracked the hard part of the uh, Deep Space Science 1. Uh, later Deep Space Sciences are, of course, going to be even harder because they're going to require more Nacrotite, probably, and also more, more just, just generally more. So, uh, but I think I think this is probably the difficult part. So if you come along to the next week's stream, you'll probably see me uh, actually getting the Nacrotite set up and maybe even getting it flowing. That'll be, um, that'll, be, that'll be my objective for next week, and I think that's realistic. So yeah, definitely something to come along and see. And I think the point where I start advertising the next stream is a is a good place to end. So yes, as I say, we will be having the uh, the next stream will be on Thursday, which I shall be working on this half seven UK time as normal. But before that, there will be another satisfactory stream on Tuesday where I shall carry on uh, playing with gold and Christmas shenaniganry and also delving into the into oil. And now, if I know anything from playing um, various other factory games, is that oil tends to be the uh, one of the more difficult steps. So in in Factorio, it, it's sort of thought of as the great film. Filter. It's the one where a lot of people will uh, we get apparently stop playing Factorio when they get to Blue Science because they have to go off and deal with oil, and oil is more difficult than the other stuff they've done, dealt with so far. In uh, Dyson Sphere Program, I remember oil being a bit more difficult than the other ones as well. And Satisfactory has already got kind of fiddly and very, very spaghetti. So um, it's going to be a bit of an adventure. I uh, I have to admit I, I kind of stopped progressing in that direction in the last stream because I basically mostly because I wasn't feeling well and therefore didn't have the concentration. But I'm feeling a lot better now, even. If if I don't sound it. So I think on Tuesday I should be able to uh, get, get, get make some big progress with the oil. There will be the other half of this update video on Monday, as you're used to, and if, if I have time over the weekend, which I sincerely hope to, uh, there should be a video coming out on Wednesday for channel supporters, and then it'll come out the week after for non-channel supporters. So if you want to get an early view of the uh, of one where I talk about the various different ways of moving things around in space exploration, so talking about spaceships and rockets and delivery cannons and elevators and archer chests, all that sort of stuff, and the relative costs and advantages and disadvantages advantages of them. I'm making a big update to the sort of similar video I did for 0.5 that covers all of the, the changes in 0.6 and also goes into quite a lot more detail on the costs and things like that and, and so that should be a good video and that'll be coming out as I say on Wednesday for supporters. That pretty much covers what's going on on the channel so as ever thank you very much for watching please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on all the rest of it and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.